Hello everyone and welcome to episode 10 of Chaos Theory. We are kicking things off hot here tonight with a matchup between Wardlow and a mystery opponent as Bentley never gave a name to MJF as to who Wardlow would be facing here tonight. We just know that the winner of this match has some pretty big implications as if Wardlow wins, he keeps it one-on-one -on -one between Finn Balor and himself, but if his opponent wins, well, it becomes a triple threat. And speaking of his opponent, well, that, that music sounds pretty familiar to me. It's gotta be the big man himself, the myth, the man, the legend. It is Keith Lee making his way down to the ring for his second ever match here in Dan Defiant Wrestling. His first ever matchup was against Cody Rhodes. Definitely recommend checking out that game here. But Keith Lee has the opportunity here tonight to add himself to that United States Championship number one contenders match that Wardlow and Finn Balor are going to be a part of. Of course, the same thing does implement, like implement for Finn Balor versus his opponent as well. I want to say that was confirmed to be Hangman Adam Page, by the way, as we get this matchup started. Wardlow already trying to outpower the big man here, but Keith Lee hits him with a powerful suplex. Keith Lee already making his way back up to his feet, too, as he climbs up to the rope, but... Wardlow not letting that happen for too long as Wardlow hits a big German suplex here on Keith Lee. Keith Lee immediately pops him down with a lariat and hits a standing moonsault. That, that was such a big maneuver here as Keith Lee, he's starting to lift him up after Wardlow kicked out. Oh, and he presses him up into a fireman's carry, but Wardlow reverses it, tries to get him into like a choke hold there, but Keith Lee also reverses it. This is a little bit of a back and forth here as Wardlow goes to hit an F10, but Keith Lee stays on his feet and throws him over the top rope. Holy shit. That, that was pretty impressive strength here from Keith Lee as what is, what is Keith Lee even thinking about doing here? He's just walking up to the middle rope. Oh, and Wardlow gets out of it and powers him up for a superplex. That was quite an interesting sequence there. I think Keith Lee should have dropped him as soon as he could have, but Wardlow takes advantage. And now both men are coming back up to their feet. And Gorilla Line from Wardlow kind of a repeat sequence from earlier as Wardlow tries to go for the power bombs that he's famous for and he gets thrown overhead as Keith Lee now bounces off of one set of ropes to hit the pounce he hit the pounce and sends Wardlow flying out the ring something we've seen done to Cody Rhodes but on a way less brutal scale as Keith Lee hits a suicide dive to the outside Keith Lee being a big man of that stature I I don't expect that out of him though I know he is capable of doing so as he hits a power bomb on the apron there and then just swings him around and throws Wardlow into the ring apron I don't know if you guys were paying attention to it earlier but halfway through the show the ring will be changed and we will be getting our new setup along with a host for Legends Night as Keith Lee hits a big moonsault off of the top rope. Sorry for my little dialogue there. Just felt like it had to be mentioned as Wardlow kicks out. I don't know what Keith Lee can do here that is going to put this big man down. Let alone what Wardlow is going to be able to do here as he keeps on hitting Keith Lee with them elbows. And he finally gets out of that. And he goes for... Oh, I'm not exactly sure, but Keith Lee rolled through. Keith Lee rolled through and now... Oh. Wardlow kind of breaking that pin. Lifts him up and hits him with a German suplex. Oh, and now he goes for that gorilla line into the corner. 
and he might have looked for that one too many times as now keep we hitting the stinger splash in the corner he somersaults up out of there and he runs in for a nice punch oh and what's this i know it's not the spirit bomb i can't exactly remember what that's called though off of the top of my head and it does not finish wardlow a move that definitely would have finished most men on the roster here oh and it looks like wardlow was going for the spirit bomb is wardlow yeah wardlow it looked like keith lee was going for the spirit bomb as wardlow picked him up for a spine buster and now what is wardlow going for here oh swanton bomb he hit a swanton bomb little did we also know that jeff hardy let alone the hardy boys in general are wardlow's favorite wrestlers so that was a little homage to one of his favorites there as now wardlow and keith lee meet in the middle for some lariats and now we're having a little lariat party here as now they're hitting lefts and rights they're just slugging it out here in the middle Who's going to get the advantage here first as they just haven't given in? Oh, Wardlow. Wardlow lifts him up and Wardlow hits the F10. Almost breaking Keith Lee's neck, I'd assume. Man, and Wardlow has finished this matchup, thinking it a singles matchup for now. Oh, but wait a minute. That's Finn Balor. What is he doing out here? Obviously, he's hitting Warren Lowe with that steel chair. But what kind of message is he trying to send to Wardlow here? It looks like he just nailed him in the back of the head with that steel chair a second ago. Yeah, come on. We need to get some offense out here for Wardlow. You know, he may not be the best guy here in BDW, but... Wardlow is definitely a future prospect here as we get ready for FTR versus the Dark Order. Well, as we already have FTR out here, we're waiting for the Dark Order to appear. And while we also just received some big news that Bobby Lashley and the rest of the Hurt Business will be in the Case of Defiance Battle Royal taking place at Legends Night for the last spot in the Case of Defiance ladder match. And now we've got Stu Grayson and Evil Uno representing the Dark Order making their way down to the ring here for this tag series match. These guys are probably considered one of the underdog teams here. Maybe besides William Regal and Umaga. As let's be honest, we've got FTR, we've got Sammy KO, we've got the Street Profits, and we... Riddle? Why, why are you out here, Riddle? Distracting the Dark Order, he just did, as now Cash hits Stu Grayson with a German suplex. I kind of lost my train of thought there, but now the matchup has already started, so F my train of thought. Cash hitting Stu Grayson with a float over pin combo, I guess you could say. I, I don't know, I wasn't really prepared for that surprise start, as Cash is also now being pinned. And Stu Grayson deadlifts him. And oh, what's he going for? Rebound, powerbound, as he rebounds him off the top rope. Will it get him anything? No. Cash kicks out. Again, though, I'm still kind of confused as to why Riddle is out here. As Cash just reversed the suplex attempt from Stu Grayson and hangs him up on the top rope for his troubles. Maybe maybe Riddle had an agreement with John Silver, but I don't think he's actually helping out the Dark Order, at least for right now, 
as Cash has taken full-fledged advantage of him just randomly coming out here on his own accord. He hits a nice German suplex. He rolls through. And what's he going for here? Oh, he tags in his partner here. Dax is now making his way into the ring, climbing to the top rope. As we see a guillotine leg drop from the top. That definitely had to hurt Stu Grayson. As, oh, he looks for his own rebound power bomb. And now what is Dax looking for here as he has the arm trapped. He's kind of putting on a Fujiwar arm bar. But Stu Grayson has rolled out and he's rolled him up. Will Dax kick out? Will he? And yes, he does. And oh, he keeps the arm trapped. As now Stu Grayson is forced to try to get out of this. But at the moment, it doesn't look like he's getting out. And oh, he tags in Evil Uno. So he might have a chance. And now Evil Uno jumping over the both of them to hit that elbow drop onto Dax. Hitting him with a stiff slap on the ground. And oh, Dax. He rolls under, picks him up, and hits him with his own German suplex. Oh, and he rolls through, and he's hitting him with a second. Is he going to look for the trifecta as he brings him to Suplex City? Paying homage to people like Kurt Angle and Brock Lesnar here. As, oh, Stu Grayson. Oh, yeah, no, Evil Uno just hung Dax over on the top rope, and Cash wants to get in on this. But he's not the legal man, so the referee's trying to hold him back. Is oh, what is Dax doing? And Sean Spears with that steel plated glove straight to the forehead of Evil Uno. And Matt Riddle takes charge, but does it really even matter? Yes, it does, because Stu Grayson keeps the dark order in this match. Oh, oh no. We got a big rig. The big rig has been hit by FTR and what a way for them to hit it too as Evil Uno sends Cash to the outside oh and he picks up Dax and hits a quick pile driver I can't believe what I'm seeing here and oh maybe I can because Dax just kicked out I can't believe the Dark Order are kind of in the favor here as oh he hits the evil one the evil one has connected and I think that is so the Dark Order have picked up the big victory here tonight and joined War Machine in the tag series finale what a big upset victory here tonight I definitely didn't expect that Well, I'll be damned. I hope Tyler Breeze is okay, but we are at the halfway point of the show. Take it away, Finley. Oh, man. The host of Legends Night is Eric Bischoff. I can't say anything else, but I'm excited for this. Well, that's some huge news. We've got Umaga and Rigo versus Santana and Ortiz in their first match back since the Cage of Carnage. And as a Case of Defiance qualifier match, we have Rey Mysterio versus Carmelo Hayes for the first time ever, let alone their first matches here in DDW.
Well, despite Shinsuke's actions there, I'd like to remind you all that we still have the American Nightmare Open Challenge in Maxwell Jacob Friedman versus John Silver in a case of defiance qualifier matchup. As we... Oh, wait a minute. Come on now. Why are these guys coming out here? They weren't even scheduled to be coming out here. Legitimately, on my transcript, we were supposed to be getting into John Silver versus MJF right here, right now. Hence why the referee's also in the ring. But I guess we're going to hear from Roman Reigns, John Moxley, and Seth Rollins of The Shield. Well, it didn't take very long for the modern day Jeff Hardy himself, Darby Allen, to come out here. What does he have to say? Well, that was a big back and forth, and now we've got the Rated R Superstar Edge and Christian coming out here to add in their two cents. You know, can we get some security out here? We've got a match to attend to. Up next, MGF versus John Silver. I don't know what's going on with these little video packages that keep on interrupting the show. First, we had one last week. Then we also had one on the dirt sheets, and now we're having an issue this week. We need to get down to who keeps on doing this to our broadcast, as now we can finally get into John Silver versus Maxwell. Jacob Friedman, a champion versus championship match. That is also for a spot in the case of Defiance, the ladder match. A case that can be cashed in at any time, anywhere. Kinda sounds a little familiar if you think about it, but we won't think too hard into the situation is now. John Silver is in the ring and well, his entrance is being cut off by shut the hell up a little bit sooner than he did as now John Silver hits him with a death valley driver after a nice European uppercut and now he takes off that championship and he gets him up for a power bomb oh but MJF gets out of it and he wrapped his scarf around his neck and slammed him straight to the ground he's lucky that this matchup hasn't started yet kinda having a similar start as the last match did, but we all know MJF purposely did that to get underneath John Silver's skin. As now that this matchup has started, MJF is cowering underneath the ropes. He knows the rules and he's taken them to his advantage as he just did. But now that he gets back into the ring, Silver slaps the shit out of him. 
Owen MJF approaches him and Silver kicks him in the face and hits him with a blockbuster. As now Silver, what is he looking for here? Oh, it doesn't matter as MJF gets him into an arm lock and starts elbowing him. He just repeatedly elbows him right in that shoulder and slams him straight down into the mat as now he drives his knee into that same position. Or yeah, that same spot, I should say. As now, what is he looking for? Oh, MJF putting a cattle mutilation, maybe kind of rubbing it in Danielson's face as to why he should have picked him instead of Cody Rhodes. No, arguably, Cody Rhodes is the bigger opponent amongst the two. MJF also would love to have more big name matches here in Daniel Defiant Wrestling as he hits that dragon suplex onto John Silver. And John Silver thankfully making it to the ropes, forcing the referee to stop MJF. But, oh, MJF caught John Silver in a low blow and then just wrenches onto that arm. Kind of has him in like a Fujiwara armbar situation, but he now locks it into a normal armbar. But John Silver thinking quick and getting out of it as all MJF kicks out of that pin but I don't know if that's what John Silver wanted it for as he lifts him up for that power bomb John Silver kicks him in the back of the head with that super kick oh he just kicked him in the arm and, and John Silver just ate that clothesline out of nowhere but he also just punched MJF off of him. This is a nice little back and forth we're getting here. As now MJF crawls over towards the corner. And John Silver hits him with a European uppercut yet again. Rocks him with a right. And now lifts him up to the top rope. As what could we see here? John Silver gets up to the middle rope or Brett's rope. Oh, and he's looking to get him up onto his shoulders, but MJF kind of reversing it back into his own, like, goodwill. And oh, trips him up and wrenches on that arm even more, but who got the big brunt of that? Silver landing on his face, but MJF landing flat on his back. MJF pinning Silver, so he must not have taken as much of a beating as we thought from that top rope maneuver but immediately gets him into a sleeper hold. Oh, and what's this? Silver somehow rolling out of it, and he he gets him up into a pinning maneuver as the referee, Jay Stifler, counts. He did not have to count to three just yet, though, as now John Silver lifts him up for a brain buster as MJF reverses it and sends Silver straight into the ring post. Oh, what's MJF looking for here as he grabs him by his face and is like wrenching at his eyes and his nose. Oh, MJF, he's got some dirty intentions here as he looks at that Intercontinental Championship. As, oh, he grabbed his microphone from earlier. And MJF had every intention on using that microphone there. But he also had that ring out on his hand and he still manages to find a way to screw John Silver here tonight. As now, Maxwell Jacobs joins the other names in the case of the finals. Well, Pete Dunn has a lot to prove there. But up next, we get ready for the American Nightmare Open Challenge number 8 as we now enter into the Codyverse. Now, before Cody Rhodes gets out here, can I say how excited I am that we are getting into the main event here tonight? Cody himself has defended that championship against many big names. Names like Brian Cage, Keith Lee, Sheldon Benjamin, Brody Lee, and many others. 
he will continue to defend that championship too as long as it's on his shoulder. But let me not interrupt the world. Such a beautiful moment that Cody Rhodes has with the crowd every single time with that. As he makes his way down to the ring now. But as I was saying, he's defended that championship against many names. And he will continue to defend that against many more. As long as he keeps that around his waist here tonight. But let's hear from the champion. I don't know if you know that music cue, but I do. He's a wanted man, and his name is Nick Nemeth. A former world champion, a former intercontinental champion, former United States champion, former tag team champion. He's done it all in the name of the WWE. But what can he do on the outside of the WWE? That's been one of the biggest questions for years, and well, we can answer that here tonight. Well, Nick Nemeth has some big words for Cody Rhodes, and well, he plans to take that world championship tonight from Cody Rhodes as well. We shall see if he can manage to be the first man to not just beat Cody, but also beat him for that world title as we get this match on their way. And starting it off pretty explosive, does Nick Nemeth taking Cody straight to the ground and hitting him with a German suplex. Cody Rhodes grabbing the rope to try to get away from Nick Nemeth and that pro wrestling background that he has he's not gonna just let Cody Rhodes escape ever so easily though as he slams him into the barricade looks into the camera and slams him off the apron oh and now he bashes Cody Rhodes head off the steel steps not just once not just twice but thrice as he now puts him up on the apron and what's What's Nick looking for here as Cody elbows him in the back of the head and climbs to the middle rope and Nick stops him halfway there and climbs up to the top. What are we about to see? And we see a ginormous sit-out face buster from the top row as Nick Nemeth now gets him propped up into a pinning position. That easily could be it, but Cody Rhodes kicking out, Cody Rhodes sticking it out for this championship as now, oh Nick Nemeth hitting a famous sir immediately going into the cover does Nick as will he get the victory no he does not not very shocking as we are still fairly early on but Cody Rhodes has been dealing with some nagging injuries as he hits a suplex Rolls through for a three amigos possibly, but Cody Rhodes reversed it. Not that it mattered much as Dolph Ziggler hung him up on the top rope. But now, Cody Rhodes climbs up and hits Dolph with a superplex. But Dolph rolls through and, and he got him in a pinning predicament, but Cody reverses it. Now Cody Rhodes has the pinning predicament in his favor and Dolph kicked out. Jumps up and hits a giant DDT. That DDT had Cody Rhodes standing on his head for a few seconds there. As now, oh, Dolph has him in a sleeper hold after that DDT was not able to get the victory there. But Cody Rhodes, what is he looking to do? Oh, he rolls through. He's powering out. He's got him up. And he slams him into the corner. And slams him off of him. What a way to get that sleeper hole off. As now, Cody Rhodes looks to go for a moonsault from the top rope. Cody Rhodes goes for that pin. Will he get it? It's got to be a no. As now, what is Cody Rhodes looking for here? Elbows him in the back. Lifts him up. 
kicks him in the sternum, pops him up and hits him with a Alabama slammer. Now Cody Rhodes goes for that figure four and he's got it locked in and he's got it locked in good. Dolph is not escaping this ever so easily. But now Dolph, he rolled through. Dolph rolled through maybe a bit easier than I expected. Both men back up to their feet. Cody went for a Cody cutter and got caught in a super kick. What a damn maneuver from Dolph Ziggler as Dolph Ziggler goes for another Famouser. But Cody caught him in a power bomb. Jumps off the rope and hits a Cody cutter. Cody Rhodes looking to take advantage. Oh man. Not Danielson coming out again. Danielson came out last week and caught Cody Rhodes by surprise. This week Nick Nemeth hits him with a danger zone because of a distraction from Brian Danielson. Will he get the three? No, he does not. The danger zone does not fulfill the dreams of Nick Nemeth, but the RKO fulfills the dreams for Randy Orton as he distracted Nick Nemeth. And he goes for another super kick, but Cody, he caught him in a crossroad. Will that be able to finish Nick Nemeth? Too many distractions here tonight from this classic match as Nick gets his hands on the rope along with his foot. But what's Cody Rhodes going to be looking to hit now as both men are back to their feet? Cody Rhodes, oh he's got him up for a vertebreaker. And he connects with the vertebreaker. That's got to be it. That's a new move we've just seen from Cody's arsenal. Well, not a new move, but a new move showcase here in Damn Defiant Wrestling as Cody Rhodes retains his title here tonight. Possibly because of Randy Orton. Who knows? That is all up for the viewer's discretion. But what will be advised is if a biker steps in the ring, you get out of there. As we are almost out of time, though. So as we get ready to sign off, the matches on screen are the matches that will be taking place on episode 11 of Chaos Theory. I hope you guys are excited for it all, because I know I am. And we bid you all farewell, and good night.